In this video, I'm going to show you how to add circles wherever I click on an image. And then when I'm done and I want to get rid of them, I'm going to use a different click to erase all of the circles. This is the code like I entered it in my last video where I can click on my image and it gives me the X, Y location that I clicked at and the pixel value, the BGR values of that pixel. What I want to do now is when I click on the mouse, I want to mark that location with a circle. First, let's just get a circle to be drawn on this image. Uh, what I can use is the CV2 circle command. The circle command, the first argument is the image that I want to draw on, and this will actually modify the Im image. So I'm going to need to take care of that later, but right now we're just going to draw on it. The second argument is going to be the location. And this is going to be an argument that has the X and Y location. So you need to have these parentheses uh, it, to have where I clicked. The next argument is going to be the radius. I'm just going to give it a value of 10. So the radius of the circle that I'm drawing. The next value is the color that I want to draw. I want to draw blue. So I have a 25500. And the last value that I'm going to use is the line width, and that's going to be a 2. And now when I run this, I want to click and see a circle, but I'm still not seeing any circle. What's happening is this wait key. We're going to have to modify this wait key part of the program. What a wait key does is it waits for you to press a key. A zero, it waits a certain amount of time. Uh, the zero is a special argument that it's waiting for me to actually press a key. And when it presses the key, it, the code stops here and then it will go to the next line. But there is nothing that my program ends. What I need to do is I need to wrap this in a, a while loop, an infinite while loop. And now I can try this wait key. So if I click, now I have to press some key and I can see where my circle was clicked on the image. This isn't very convenient because I don't want to have to click and then hit space every single time that I that I want to display a circle. And I also need to modify this so I can actually close this image. I'm clicking on the X, but it just pops up because it's in this while loop. Okay, so first let's modify this so it automatically will display my circles. If I make this number in the wait key higher than a zero, if I make it like a 1000, then this is going to say every 1000 seconds or every 1000 milliseconds or one second, my image is going to refresh. So I can click. And if I click at the beginning of that uh, timer, it takes a while. If I click closer to the end of that refresh, it will refresh faster. I can do this, make it go faster if I choose a 10. And if I choose a 10, it's going to almost look like it's instantaneous. So now I have the circles appearing on the screen uh, almost immediately when I click it, but I still can't close this screen. Let me make this just a little bigger on the screen capture side. Oh, I guess I can't. But when I click the X button, it just pops right back up. What's happening is we're still in this while loop. We have to break out of this while loop in some way. The way we can do that is we can use wait key. If I look at what wait key returns, wait key returns this value. And if I'm not pressing anything, it's a value of zero. I actually need to slow this down a little bit so we can see it. So it's a minus one if we're not pressing anything. If I press a Q, that's what I want to press to end my program. I get 113. If I press spacebar or enter or an eight, I get different values. And I want to use those values to know when to end this program. Let me do something like if K is equal to 113, then break. So now it's still on a slow timer, but if I hit Q, my window will close and my, my program will exit. This is sort of not uh, 
convenient, I need to know the number of all the key presses, I can use this ORD function. And what ORD does is it returns the Unicode uh, for a given value. So if I use ORD of Q, this will return a 113. And a lot of times you'll also see this part of the code. This is a bitwise AND operator. Uh, so it's just making sure that this value doesn't get higher, is not a value that's returned higher than a 255. Uh, so this is going to allow me to hit Q to kill my program, which is good. And I can make it a lot faster. Uh, with the circles and now we are able to click on the location and add a circle now let's modify this code so when i click on the circle i'm not drawing it in this get x y event i want to create a list of all my circle values so let's right here create an empty list let's also create a copy of this image so i am one is image dot copy and I'm going to comment this out for right now. But all I want to do is say, if I have click at that location, I want to append this circles with an X, Y value. And I'm going to put it in a list so I can index it. And let's print out circles. So now when I click, my as I click the number of circles in this list grows, but I commented out actually drawing them. So let's fix that. I can say for circle in circles, I can do CV2 dot circle. I want to draw this on image one, not my original image. And the X, Y location is going to be circle zero, circle one. And then I'll have a radius of 10 and the color will still be blue. And my line width will still be two. So now when I run this, when I click, oops, I'm not displaying image one. I'm displaying the regular image. So let's fix that. And when I click, now all my circles are displayed on that image. I still have nothing when I click the right button. And I can create a new event up here that's gonna get rid of this list. So if event is cv2.event r button down, I want to circles dot clear and right now when i click i create the list when i right click i get rid of the list but i haven't told it to do anything with the image yet it's still displaying image one uh, and remember it modifying image one one way i can do this i can say this if circles if the length of circles is equal to zero, then uh, image one is equal to image.copy. I can reinitialize what image one is. Now, if I click on all these different locations and then I hit the right button, it's going to get rid of all my images, uh, all my circles, and it's like starting over. Hopefully now you understand how you can put different circles and clear circles or other shapes on an image and you can draw on images.